Hello, this is Angela Anderson. Thanks for joining me for this acrylic painting tutorial. In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to paint a colorful vase of flowers. I think it's going to be a really good beginner lesson. I'm going to try to keep it really simple and make it easy on you guys tonight. I'm going to show you step by step how to do it from start to finish. I've got my husband Mark with me. Hey, everybody. He's in chat tonight. So if you can, you've got questions, you can ask those in chat and we'll try to answer. Let's get started. They thought I was pretending you were in the studio because you didn't actually yeah. say hi. Yeah, because I didn't press the button. <laughs> <laughs> He's really here. <laughs> Oops. Oh, well. That's all right. All right. I'm using a 12 by 12 inch canvas today. This is the Blick Premier Canvas. I ran out of my Fredericks canvases. I um, actually really like this brand, though, because they've got the splines um, in the back, which is just this little fancy rubber gasket kind of thing. It's, it seals up all your canvas edges really cleanly. And um, so, yeah, that's a if you're looking for those down in the description, I've got a, a list of um, my Blick recommendations down there. You can look those up if you're interested. But anyhow, that's what I'm using tonight. Really nice and tight um, canvases, really well made. Um, before I used Fredericks, this is what I used all the time. So <laughs> anyhow, all right, I'm going to go with my brushes here, show you what I'm going to be using. Um, this is my, um, these are all Princeton brushes. I've got a variety of rounds and filberts, and I'm just going to kind of go with whatever um, feels right. Um, if I'm going to start probably with this one, this is my four, or I'm sorry, six filbert uh, from the Princeton Summit series. And then as I mentioned, uh, as I use them, I'll mention the other brushes. Um, but I think I can do most of the stuff with this. I'll probably need this one and probably um, the two round. Those will probably be my workhorse brushes tonight. And I may pull out my um, Velvet Touch Angle brush. This is a three eighths inch. Um, the other ones are kind of on standby in case, uh, you know, the the others don't work for some reason. <laughs> so um, I won't go through the whole list just in case. <laughs> Let me go over my colors. I've got burnt umber, burnt sienna, quinacrid, I'm sorry, burnt umber, burnt sienna, Indian yellow hue, which is the background color, by the way, I didn't mention. Um, cadmium yellow light, Thalo green yellow shade. This is uh, Thalo turquoise. It is uh, bl bled out over. <laughs> I guess that my palette must have been a little wet when I put it down because it's made a monster pile there, but it's not that much paint. It just looks like it. Um, ultramarine blue and doxazine purple, quinacridone magenta, cadmium red light, cadmium orange, unbleached titanium, titanium white, and gloss glazing liquid. I um, am using fluids in these four colors here, the phthalo green, turquoise, doxazine purple, and quinacridone magenta because I'll be using um, brush strokes that'll, it'll lend itself to having thinner paints. Um, so if you're doing like specialty brush strokes, especially brush, uh, like petals of daisies and things like that, um, having thinner paint will help with that. Um, just makes it a little bit smoother going on. All right. I already kind of sketched out a little bit ahead of time, just kind of play with the composition. In the original photo, I've got my hand in it, but this is Tuesday night, and I'm not going to deal with um, painting a hand tonight. <laughs> just don't, nobody got time for that on a Tuesday night. So we're just going to do it a little simplified and really easy way of kind of cheating is just to let your, your, <laughs> let your, um, if you don't want to paint your background too, let your vase go off the bottom of the canvas. So that's what we're going to do. We're just going to kind of crop it. It is just, if this is center here, so you can see it's kind of two thirds on this side, one third on here, you know, of center kind of uh, there. So not quite on the third, but close. So going to do kind of like that. That's really all I'm going to do for my vase. I'm going to put a leaf in here. I've got like multiple photos that I took of this particular bouquet from different angles. So I'm going to kind of play with the angles um, a little bit, but I'm going to keep the main composition similar to what is in this photo. I'm just going to kind of 
change like this main flower. I'm going to make the center kind of more in the middle of it and show petals on all sides of it instead of just kind of on one side, if that makes sense. So that one is going to be our main flower there. And then we're gonna have another smaller, these are the colorful echinacea that we got that were really pretty. Um, and they've, they, uh, if you let them dry out, they've created a lot of seeds. So we've tried to, we've, I'm hoping they'll, they'll come back the same color. I'm not sure if they'll be true to color or not, but we'll see. Save some seeds and planted them in other beds. All right, another, this one is Xenia. This one is a Queen Lime Xenia, and I think it's the red, Queen Lime Red. Um, then this one is a Coral Poppy. This was a gar I think it's a Garden Poppy that we had. We had, this spring we had a lot of, a lot of beautiful flowers. Glad I was able to catch them all in a vase here. Um, some snapdragons here coming out and then I've got some mazurka um, it's really pretty bright magenta with pink tipped um, um, xenia here and then a dahlia the cafe a lot dahlia and then here's a queen lime lime xenia over here in the bright green and then all of these are larkspur and there is a difference between larkspur and delphinium I did not know that until this year when I planted them both <laughs> but they're very similar looking so you can call them whatever you want <laughs> I won't tell anybody <laughs> I posted them somebody said no that's Del that's a Del delphinium and I was like no actually not but well, the leaves are different. The leaves are of the delphinium are um, more heart shaped, and these ones are more like fern, really very thin and fluffy. All right, so that's going to be my main. I don't know if you can see all of that, but you can. I kind of went into more detail than I usually do. Normally, I just put a big old circle where I'm going to put my main flowers, but um, I went ahead and kind of drew it in a little bit more. What were we going to say, hon? Oh, I was going to say that's why people come to our channel. To, to learn, learn botany facts. and right, medical right. terms. Oh, for sure. They're because we're so, always so sure. accurate on that. <laughs> Not. <laughs> I'm sure they they were just being helpful. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, no, we do appreciate it. Obviously. Oh, I don't. I know. I don't. I, I just. For once, I knew what I was talking about. <laughs> <laughs> It doesn't happen that often. <laughs> All right, I'm mixing my turquoise. Add a little bit of white to it there, and I'm adding some ultramarine blue. Whoops, I got some white stuck in there. That went a little bit darker. Okay, there we go. Ultramarine blue. And um, let's ask Chet what they want to do about the background. I'm kind of torn. I, I really like this green, so I'm thinking about just leaving it kind of green. Um... Uh, as it, it like in the photograph um, I took photos in with a gray background that on the concrete um, and the colors in the flowers don't look as vibrant I guess it just kind of washes out the color vibrancy so that green in the background really did kind of I don't know it, it does add to it it's kind of a expected maybe so maybe not like super um out their choice for it, but if anybody else has got another idea, I'm open to hear it. Uh, I'm going to add a little bit more white here and at the top of the vase. This is the vase that I, I have it right here. I've got some more of my dahlias that are blooming out, but you can see it's kind of lighter at the top and it has these speckling and things. I can't turn it to the side or I'm going to dump water all over my my, <laughs> my painting, but you get the idea. So it's like a little bit darker at the bottom and lighter at the top. And I think it was a Pottery Barn sale, obviously. Maybe uh, West Elm, I don't know. I use them interchangeably. They're owned by the same company, so they have a lot of the same type of styles and stuff. 
West Dome is usually cheaper, so it was probably West Dome. <laughs> and again, I probably got on clearance because that's, that's how, how cheap we do. I am. <laughs> hey, that's where to be. So expensive. We actually went to a yard sale and, or not yard sale, a, a flea market and got a bunch of really nice vases and things for future videos. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Found some really unique, really fun little faces and things. So I'm looking forward to using those in future videos. Our garden is blooming a lot of zinnias right now. That's about all we got left. And then the hollyhocks, I should say. The hollyhocks are doing really well. This is my first year to do hollyhocks, and they've pretty much just taken over the whole edge. And Like, I don't even go over there. There's a band of rogue sparrows that are <laughs> have made their home in there. Like, literally, like, probably, what, how many would you say? Oh, at least eight, probably, nine, oh, yeah, maybe at least. more. Yeah. And, yeah, they just <laughs> all in there. <laughs> do I need to tell them? Their name? Their gang name? Yeah, Mark. <laughs> Hell Sparrows. Hell Sparrows. <laughs> they, they, got, they got little leather jackets and everything. <laughs> it's kind of intimidating. They are intimidating. <laughs> I'm not saying I'm scared of them. I'm just saying they're a little much. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> when they come out in mass like that. All right, I've got some green, they look green here and some white, and I'm adding some... Green. And this is whatever color you do your background, this is what I would add to this. So I haven't cleaned out my brush, so it still has a little bit of that. But just adding some atmospheric color reflections in there from whatever's in the background. And as you can see, I'm not I'm leaving my brush strokes showing. I'm not being super particular about about keeping it all tidy and I'm gonna kind of just do my background um, around this and maybe even leave a little bit of this yellow showing from the background so you can be as sloppy as you want to really you can show your drawing if you want I, I really like the look of all of that so um, I, I would say just make this your own interpretation and get creative these kind of paintings are super easy to do that with here, you know, just makes it really easy to express yourself when we're doing these really um, fluid, juicy brush strokes, um, loose style paintings. I'm getting the phthalo green, and I think I'm just going to use this kind of phthalo green. It's just, just that really bright in your face green. I like it. It. It works. I might add a little bit of white to it to lighten it up slightly, but um, and I might have to. I'm probably going to have to darken up my vase around the edge here because it's obviously showing. I'm just going to kind of do vaguely grass-like brush strokes. So just kind of dab it on. I'm not going to worry about where this this. Uh, Larkspur is coming down because those brush strokes will be really thick and go over the top of anything that we have down here. So I'm not going to try to paint those around anything. And pretty much same for the rest of the flowers. I'm kind of going to go over where I think they're going to be pretty much. Try to kind of blend out those areas a little bit so that it's a little easier. But I'm not going to try to paint around anything in particular. I'm not. It's not like watercolor where I'm having to make sure that I'm leaving room for my light colors and things. I can, I can just paint right up to things and and uh, paint over areas and then we can cover it later with our colors. Acrylics are great for, you know, covering other areas up. How's everybody in chat doing? They're doing great. Good. I missed you guys last week. I'm glad to be back. It's been a last week this time we were having a baby, grandbaby. That's right. That's right. <laughs> Uh, that was exciting. 
Everybody's doing well. Baby Amelia is the cutest, and sorry, every <laughs> other grandma in out there. I'm sure you'll disagree, but and, and Liam, and Liam, but she's the cutest, easiest baby ever. Like, yeah. Oh my gosh. Like, why did we not get? <laughs> it's not fair. <laughs> we got three beautiful boys. Yes, we and none did. of them were nearly as easy a baby as Amelia is <laughs> for there. She did not cry. She, well, I take it back. She cried maybe twice that we were there. <laughs> she cries a little bit. <laughs> Only if Every, her diaper is like really right, dirty. <laughs> right. And we try to lay her down for pictures. <laughs> she wasn't having that. <laughs> but other than that, she was pretty chill. About the most chill baby I've ever been around. <laughs> it was awesome. Yeah, they said they took her to the doctor yesterday, and you know she, they sent us pictures, and she mm-hmm. was chilling. And they said, yeah, even when they pricked, pricked her, her foot, foot, she didn't she cry, didn't cry yeah. or anything. And she was just kind of hanging out. <laughs> like, really? No idea what that would be like. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We got some. I got my October schedule up, so we got some fun stuff that we're painting on this month. I had a little bit of yellow just to change it up. I'm just using different colors, and you see, um, I'm I'm making sure that I'm working the wet edge. So I'm not going back to this stuff that's already been sitting here for a while, because this stuff is not going to blend out. But this stuff that I just put down is going to blend just fine. And I'm not over blending either. I, I don't want the color to be, you know, all one color. I want there to be multiple colors in here and different shades of color. So I am um, going over the edges, but only a couple brush strokes and then moving on. You know, don't, don't. Uh, sit here and blend and blend and blend in one area because then you're just going to end up with one color, solid color throughout the whole thing, which is fine too. If you choose to do that, that's up to you. But if you don't want to do that, that's why it's happening. <laughs> you know, if you over blend and kind of mess with an area over and over again, it'll, it'll just, uh, all the colors will merge together. You won't end up with any change at all between these sections. So just kind of using the thalo, thalo green, a little bit of turquoise here and there, just kind of blending this out, creating this nice green background. And I really like this color for the background. It may be a little bit dark. I think my value is a little bit on the dark side. So I may have to go back through here and add a little bit lighter tone on it. Um, the reason why I would be concerned with that is that um, if this is too kind of middle of the road color, then my I'll either have to go really dark or really light over the top of it for it to show up very well. So I don't want to have to fight the, the values in the painting, the values of the light and dark. I don't want to have to fight this too much to get the colors just um, to stand out against this green. So colors in my flowers. And if I go light, then I can just kind of go dark on my flowers and I don't have to worry about everything will show up just fine against the background green if I have it sort of light. So I'm going to go back in here. This is mainly light, ma mainly dry now. So I'm kind of really just dry brushing over it. I'm not trying to blend it into anything. I'm just kind of putting some color over the top of it. There we go. So this is my green that's got white mixed in. I can also kind of smudge out my edges by kind of going over my vase, the edge of my vase with a little bit of this. I'm going to probably get another... Uh, do another layer on my vase but this will kind of blend that out a little bit I'm going to get my vase color oops it's drying already 
put some of that down. And that soft edge, that um, soft edge will make it look a little bit blurred out and a little bit kind of more dreamy. I don't know. I like to use soft edges on my vases and things because it just, I think it looks a little bit better. And then we can use the hard, ed hard edges. And by hard edges, I just mean, you know, the, the really defined lines of the petals and things in my actual flower petals and that'll make those the focus and this will kind of blend out into the background a little bit more if it's sort of smudged out and blendy if that makes sense yes it does good using some of that green from my background in my vase here again Paint it in right now. <laughs> no reason. Just yeah, wasn't sure got... if there was something special going no, on. No, nothing special going on down there. Just okay. forgot. So I squirrel and decided to go. Yeah, I just kind of got in, got into doing something else and forgot to finish it. All right, getting a little bit more white here. And I can make it darker down here where there's no gonna, not going to be any flower petals and things. And I might just do that, you know, make these corners a little bit darker. Um, and then make sure that I have, like, lighter areas around where my flowers are going to come out. So I'm going to get some of the lighter color here. And I'm added a little bit of water. So it's just not, it's kind of acting like it doesn't want to come off my brush. I'm going to go around my flowers a little bit. And okay, and then I want to blend these together, so I'm going to get some of my green and just make an intermediate color, so kind of a color that's sort of in between these two shades, and use that to kind of soften up those transition areas between those two colors can solve this problem by just making your background a little bit lighter than I made mine. So go go light and then maybe go one shade lighter than you think you need. You can always darken it up later if you need to, but um, once we get our flowers on, we're not going to want to do a whole lot of this. So we want to get this color as close to where we want it as possible before we start putting it on any of our flowers. Not that you can't add, you know, change the color later, but you're not going to really want to. It's going to be a pain. So, all right. So I think that looks good. I'm gonna smudge out that edge again. Looks great. Okay. There's our background and our green. going to, now that this is pretty much dry, I'm going to get my turquoise and some burnt sienna. Maybe a little bit of ultramarine blue. There we go. So I'm gonna, I've got this really dark. You can see it's like at least two shades darker than what I put on previously. So it's going to be a lot darker than what we've got on our vase right now. And I'm going to add some glaze. And I need to make sure that this is dry enough. It looks like looks good. And I'm just going to go over kind of the bottom of my vase. It's a little bit wet right there. Brush it up and then kind of down along this side just a little bit. And don't have too much paint in your brush. I've got if I've got a lot of paint still in here right now, um, so I'm going to wipe it out. So putting the color down, and then I'm just going to wipe my brush off. and Because I don't want any more color on here, I just want to blend it out. So I'm just going to kind of start with the wet edge, the wettest, the first part you put down, the part that's probably starting to dry. 
there at the bottom and then I did my sides and then up here so kind of just leaving this middle part sort of lighter and just smudging that all out See that? okay went a little bit darker and then if I want to go darker still I can get a little bit more of the dark whoops I don't know what I just did there the brush kind of sludged out on me with it right now. You just gotta let it dry every now and then. Um, one thing I can do though is I can kind of make my little pattern on here and if you don't want to do this part you can leave it out. It's totally up to you. Um, there's these little silver squiggles on here. I'm gonna get a little bit of the blue just so it's not solid white. And just use the round brush this is my two round turn turn it to a point make sure I have you know like just a little bit of paint on here and I'm just going to make these little speckly areas and again this is totally up to you if you want to do this or not you can leave it off you can just do splatters on your vase you can do stripes patterns whatever you want to do it's up to you you're painting your choice but I like these little splattery little looking things a little silvery speckles in the vase they are silver by the way if you look at them there they're shiny silvery little speckles that have like a dark center in them not really sure what they're made out of but probably silver, I don't know, some sort of metallic paint that's put in the put in the glaze. I think they were called reactive glass or reactive pottery. So I think the name of them. I got them last year though, so if you're looking for them, I don't know that they'll still be there. <laughs> don't think they still sell them. Sadly, I'm sorry. Um, Just send me a message. I might be able to sell you one. I'm not a. I'm not a. Uh, but the price is right. Better not. Uh, yeah, but if it's good chocolate. I'm not a spokesperson for Pottery Barn. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, I'm gonna get some of that dark. Dark green and some burnt umber this is that color that we use for our shadows and I'm just going to go in here and add it to the centers of some of these just the biggest ones and up towards the top as they come down the, the, little, the little teeny tiny ones don't have any of that okay I mean that's all I really need to do there I don't think we need to do a whole lot more looks okay to me I'm gonna probably add some shadow or highlights on it but I'm gonna do that after it's dry so all right so let me show you while well, that's drying really well because I really need that green background to dry completely before I do my flowers over it so I'm gonna set that aside if I can find, find a spot and I'll show you how I'm going to do the brush strokes for the flowers. So there'll be a couple different kinds of brush strokes that we'll do. And they'll all depend on the kind of flower. So the first one will be the, the daisy-like flowers. So the echinacea and the zinnias, the daisies, any of those that have the kind of rounded tip flowers so you kind of have an idea of where your center is and some flowers will have a tiny center like the zinnias will have a small center and then some of the echinacea and thing will, will have a larger center um, more circular type of center um, so for the zinnias we're going to start at the back flat um, 
petal. I'm going to set my brush down, and this is a round brush that I've loaded it with paint. I've got the fluid paint. I'm going to add a little bit of the heavy body to it just to give it a little bit more weight. Um, but you don't want too thick of paint because it will change the way the brush um, reacts. So load it. Um, I kind of roll it, and then I kind of scoop it through. So it's not, it's not come to a uh, really sharp point. If you scoop it back through the paint, like I find a little puddle and I kind of load it like this and then you'll see me kind of twist it, twist the tip in it, R roll it, scoop it, and twist the tip. And that gets you kind of a nice little tip, but you have more paint in here. So if you kind of just press down and roll through, it kind of offloads most of that paint and so you won't have a lot of paint to work with. So I found that kind of scooping it from side to side and then just rolling the tip through the heavy paint um, kind of works for me. But you do want the tip to be coming to a point. If you if you don't have a brush that is coming to a point, it won't it won't work on here if it's not working here before you even start. So just make sure you've got a brush that's got a good tip on it that's coming to a good fine point. And then I'm gonna set the brush down out at the at the end of the petal so the very end of the petal I can wiggle it just a little bit if I want a really wide petal and then I'm going to pull it towards my center and it should if it's a good brush it should come to a fine point and I did that really slow it 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 uh as I'm doing these I'm not going to take that much time but you can see so you're going to want to go all the way through, and I can do them twice if I kind of mess up. And I'm not really worried about the centers of these. I'm probably only going to, on my zinnias, I'm probably only going to do the very back end of them because what I'm going to do is put another layer on here. And you can see right here what's happening. My brush is starting to kind of run out of paint right here, and that's just because I, I have no paint down here that I'm working with. So got to get more paint. And make sure that you're keeping it fluid. If your paint gets too thick, it's not going to come off the brush really easily. And then you'll end up with, um, with this problem too, where it starts to break up on you. Out of focus, okay. Oh, do we want to zoom in? Let's zoom in here. Like that. Is that better? Yes. Okay. So again, the zinnias, I'm not going to worry about attaching to anything. The um, echinacea, I'm going to curve a little bit. So I'll be doing like the same thing, but I'll be turning my, my thing, my brush. And I'm going to want to attach those petals into the center a little bit. And there's going to be just a little bit of a separation between them. And I'm probably going to need a bigger brush. Now that I'm doing this, I'm seeing that this brushes, the petals are not going to be quite as big as I need them to be. Um, the smaller ones that are kind of farther away are going to be, um, the main part of the petal is going to be going away from you. So you've got a petal that's shaped like this, but as it's going away from you, you're only seeing this much of it instead of the whole long petal. So even these long petals like this, if you turn it enough, you're only seeing a very shortened amount of it. Um, so don't feel like you're doing it wrong. If, you, if you're seeing these petals that are really short, it's not because the, the, you know, the flower is deformed. It's just because it's turned away from us. And if we don't do that, then they're going to look funky. So we're going to have these kind of shorter ones in this here. And then the ones that are kind of facing us are going to be these longer ones. Um, the ones that are laying flat towards us. And then the zinnia is going to get smaller. And so there, as you go in towards the center, we're going to have in smaller ones going in in between here. I'm doing it really fast, but you get the idea. Like that, and then another layer in the center. Um, little teeny tiny ones. And then you're gonna have a dark, dark center 
there. Same thing here. We're going to have, you know, a center that's going to fill in and you can, we'll save the, the last little bits of the center to cover up any areas that we maybe missed or something like that. But that's going to be our main daisy like flowers and of course I didn't quite get my values right on this one because it kind of looks a little washed out back there but we'll be doing different ones um, the ones that are the larkspur are going to be using an angle brush because their petals are a little bit more triangular shaped so we're going to do an angle brush and kind of um, dab it with the angle almost straight down but not quite so the the brush is going to be kind of an angle to the center and so we're going to do these little five petaled flowers and little dabs in the center of our white or yellow or whatever color we want to use for our centers like that and those are just going to go all along a long stem and at the very top, there's just these little kind of buds that are starting to form. And I'm just setting my brush down with the tip straight down to pull those little bud type petals and making sure that everything kind of attaches to that long stem there. And then these, these flowers come off and sometimes they're going to be kind of sideways to us. So we may only see just like a little bit of them like this right and then sometimes they're going to be open like this and we'll see more of the petals and have these nice angled petals like that okay so those will be our larkspur and then um and they'll be a little bit more crowded than that but that's kind of the basic shape of the petals and again let me go over the petal the way you do the petals you're going to set your brush down the angle brush with the tip out at the at the base of the petal and pull in toward the center and really you're just kind of letting the brush do the work kind of pulling and I can if I want a rounded tip I will press straight down and it'll round out that tip a little bit. But if I want a more angular tip, then I'm gonna kinda of just flop it on its side and pull it towards the center, like that. And depending on how much I how much I kinda of turn it or you know how much of the width of the brush that I use, um, I can get a more sharp point or kind of a more rounded point to it. And the more you play with the angle brush, the the more comfortable you'll get with using it. But you can make these straight lines with them too, really nice straight lines. Um, you can do a lot with the angle brush. Um, what you can, and you can even do, you can even do some of these kind of petals too. You can do some of these longer petals um, with this angle brush too. So if you only have an angle brush, um, you can still do the daisy type petals with them. It's just a little bit trickier to get them to curve because you're going to have to turn. They're so wide, you have to turn it. Um, they don't do these tapered points as quite as easy. You can do it, but it's a little trickier. The round brushes do the work for you. And then the last ones was the... the um, I don't know why I grabbed my purple and then my orange because it's going to make a terrible color. Um, the last one is going to be the poppy. And that one, I'm going to use my filbert brush and I'm going to kind of turn it um, as I go. Just letting the round shape make my petals for me. It's going to be really easy. And as I want the smaller petals, I can turn it on its side and pull in towards the center. But it makes these little rounded petals really easily for me. And just by using the edge of the brush, just setting it down and pulling towards the center a little bit. And I'm lifting too as I pull towards the center. So it's not just pulling towards the center. I'm kind of lifting on it too. I'll kind of dab it in there. Okay, so there's our our idea our flower petals okay different ones all right let's 
get going on our flowers. I think our background is ready to go. Thank you, honey. Yeah. And we will. So I'll move a little bit faster doing these pet petals. I won't slow down to explain as much now that you've kind of seen how it's done. I can kind of move a little bit All more right. quickly in the rest of this. As you say, paint it like you stole it. Paint it like you stole it. <laughs> and go. <laughs> do I have epic music to play in the background for Ooh, this? I could. I could do that. <laughs> I was messing Fast around. With, I was messing around with a garage band <laughs> on my iPad a couple weeks ago, so I can just kind of make something up for you on the fly. Band music in yeah. there. Well, you know, I, you, you can make your own music, so. Oh, you can. Yeah. Oh, is that what that is? Okay. Yeah. So you want I thought garage band was when you were trying to dance or play guitar to the music. Isn't, isn't that what that's called? Uh, then I was really doing it wrong. <laughs> Okay. I was able to play synthesizers and keyboards. Well, play is in air quotes. Okay. I'm I'm obviously thinking of the wrong game. Well, no, and yeah. The no, GarageBand is a music creation app on the Apple devices. But wasn't there a, a game called GarageBand that you played a guitar and you had? That was Guitar it? Hero. That's what I'm thinking. That's what I'm thinking. So this is not Garage. Band Hero. This is Garage Band. Check. Garage Band, not Guitar Hero. Okay. Garage. <laughs> None of the words in the they, are they the kinda, same. They start with the G. That's about it. <laughs> Can you tell I'm a little tired tonight? Okay. <laughs> We're just moving on. <laughs> moving on. I'll just pretend I never said that. <laughs> And somebody oh. said they want to see me dance. Well, that was a long, long time ago I danced. That was 100,000, 100, right? 100,000, yeah. 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 yeah, marked a little ditty for the yeah. 100,000 on camera. It's somewhere. It's, I don't know if we, I don't know somewhere. if we saved it. It was on Facebook, wasn't it? No, we oh, had it on Oh, was it YouTube? Our, yeah, it was you on our YouTube stream. We did a really quick one. I think it was late at night. Was it the one when the kids were wearing the stockings? On no, that was faces? a Christmas thank you. Okay. I don't know. It all blends together We after need to do that again. Do what again? Do a Christmas thank you with the family. Mm-hmm. And have our sons not pull their I don't know. masks over their faces. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was Spencer. All right, I am mixing up some white with some turquoise, and I'm having to add a lot of the glaze because this white is super opaque. And even you can kind of see um, if you just pull through how opaque it is and just kind of see where you, you know, how much of your vase you want to cover. Um, I don't want to cover too much of it, but I do want some reflections in here. So I'm going to just going to, that looks pretty good. That's, that's all right. I could use zinc white, so if you have zinc white, grab it. You could probably use that instead. It'd probably do a better job, but I didn't have it out on my list, and I'm not going to add it now. So we'll just we'll just go with this. It'll be fine. But I'll just say that zinc white will make it a little bit more of a translucency and a little bit more of a realistic, probably. Just going back in with a little bit brighter white here and adding just a couple little spots there. I don't want to cover up too much, and if I, you know, if I want to like blend out this bottom edge, I'm just going to kind of get some, get a dry brush. You can even use your finger and just work those wet edges out so that they look a little softer. And that looks good enough to me. I'm going to move on. All right. So the um, the center of my area, my flower area arrangement here has got a really dark area right in here. So I'm going to get my dark green. I'm going to get my green and add burnt umber to it, make it nice and dark, maybe a little bit of purple, really dark black, and just go in here and make some dark areas around where my flowers are going to go on top. This is going to give 
them some depth underneath them when I add my colors. Just in this area, it doesn't have to be everywhere. Just kind of where the thickest part of the flowers are coming out of the vase. That's it, I don't need it way out here. Okay, so that looks pretty good. I'm gonna get some white. I haven't cleaned out my brush, it's fine. I'm going to add some green to this and get some Indian yellow hue and add that as well. So it'll be like a little bit more of a yellow green. I'm going to add some of these leaves of the pineapple. This was pineapple. Oh, mint. Pineapple mint. I, was trying to, I couldn't think of it. I thought I was going to say sage, but I knew that was wrong. Pineapple mint. Had this really cool, var it's variegated. Had this really beautiful scent too. And I never did make, put it in my tea, but um, we, I did put it in my um, cucumber water. It was really good. Very minty though. It took over the flavor. But it was really pretty. I'm gonna put some down here too. Coming down off my just to kind of surround my flowers with other stuff. Other little bits of greenery things. They made really a really nice filler for my flower arrangements with that little variegated color. Okay. And then getting my little bit of white and just a tiny bit of yellow in there. There was kind of a yellowish tint to the white. And just go in here and kind of touch around the edges. And I'm just using this filbert, which is kind of big for this, but it's going to work just fine. I don't need a ton of detail here. I'm just going to kind of dab in a little bit of a hint of color on the tips of some of these. literally just kind of dabbing a little color over the top and it may look kind of weird at first but the more you do it and kind of step back a little bit and look at it from a distance then you'll kind of go okay that looks all right you know it's kind of one of those things where it may look a little bit funky to you when you first do it but that's why you step back when you look at me I'm like, all right, it's all right. I can, I can deal with this. Let me step back for Let a second. Let me step Hold back on. for a second, make sure. Yeah, he looks all right. It's all right. <laughs> but honey, you've got your glasses. Oh, right. Yeah, you look better. That's good. <laughs> <laughs> yep. All righty. So let's go ahead. I'm going to work from back to front. So I'm going to work on these ones that are in the far back first. I'm going to get some yellow and I'm working into this green here. Get some white and I'm going to do this Queen Line Zinnia back here. It's kind of facing up this way. So I'm just going to kind of angle this up like that. If it doesn't show up, you can add a little bit more white. There you go. Dog's grown, grown, grunting at me. Oh. He's becoming a grumpy old man. I think he's just happy that we're home. Yeah, he is. He we is. were gone. Oh my gosh. We I were know. gone like for four days and we... Face licks. We... Came back, came back for, for a, one night for one night to change out some clothes in the suitcase and head back out again and yeah, we, were we were gone, gone for a, a good week and a half yeah. easy. 
And came back, and man, he was just like, oh my yes. gosh. I knew you would come back. I knew it. I... <laughs> it was so cute. Nobody makes you feel loved more like your dog. <laughs> Ouch. Well, when you come back from places, mm-hmm. you're not like jumping right, all yeah. over, cheering. Okay, well, we'll see what he gets like... you for Christmas. <laughs> And I'm not taking him shopping. <laughs> uh-huh. Okay. So, I'm sorry I'm talking about my dog and not explaining <laughs> what I'm doing here. Getting some yellow. And really the cadmium yellow light is a good color with just like a tiny touch of green. That's pretty much the queen lime color. It's this really beautiful minty lime not minty, really. Just more like, you know, yellow chartreuse color. Bright. And so I'm going to get that color. And again, making sure that I have it fluid enough. Twist my brush so it's coming to a point. And this back end of it made kind of like a triangle shape right here. And I'm just going to kind of come up into it and um, do these back petals that are kind of coming up underneath. We're seeing the back side of this flower. We're not seeing the front of it. It's facing away from us. I might make them a little bit wider. So the overall shape I'm looking at is kind of a flattened dome. So it's kind of straight here, and then the top kind of rounds out. It's also kind of straight right here, so... um, Just making sure I'm kind of getting that overall shape right. Make it a little bit wider out here. There we go. Looks good. And then I'm going to get some of this darker green for the middle petals. Kind of fill it in with a little bit darker green. Maybe get a little bit of this green that we mixed up for the center there and mix it with this and use it kind of down here kind of for some gray underneath these petals are not getting as much light under here there we go and I'm just kind of going over the top there to add a little bit of that darker color under there and then there's some smaller petals that are right here, not smaller but um, they're facing us directly so we're only seeing just a tiny bit of them right there so I'm seeing that gray and then the tips of them have this white-ish color so I'm going to get a lot of white and go a couple shades lighter than my lime green and just do little teeny tiny for each one of these so little bits and try to kind of connect them with some of this Just little dots. There we go. These are tricky. So if you don't want to do these, just do it for open face like we did here. Like what like I showed you on here. The, the, this is going to be the easy way of doing it. This is a lot trickier to get this right. So I would save this for my more, if you've done a few of these and you want to challenge yourself, because this is going to be a little bit trickier to get it to look right. Just saying while I'm doing this, like realizing that this is a little bit not, not super easy. Just to let you know. So I did say I was going to simplify it and then I'm doing this. I'll tell you, sorry. I 
can't help myself. <laughs> well, there's not a whole lot of other ways of doing that, though, not in making it look right. So not, not making it look like it's facing away from us. The easier way of doing it would be to make it look like it's facing us and just flatten it out. All right, so I'm going to get some of my green, a little bit of the burnt umber, burnt sienna, make a little bit darker green. And then now that I've got all this on here, I'm going to go in here and just do the little dabbing brush strokes to finish off the underside of this pet this flower here. There we go. Okay. I promise that one's going to be the hardest one that we do. <laughs> the rest of these will be a lot easier. Okay, let's do the let's do the larkspur. I'm going to get some blue and add that to it. Maybe a little bit of pink. So I'll have a couple of tones to use. And our larkspur were all kinds of tones between purple and blue and pink. They were beautiful. Light pink. I didn't have a lot of light pink. There's a little bit of light pink down here. I didn't have any for this picture that were the longer, bigger, light pink ones, but you can make these whatever color you want. Okay. Um, okay. So let's do them right here. The ones at the top kind of start small, and then as they come out, they get a little bit bigger and open up more as they come away from the tip of the flower. And I left the top to, I'm going to do the, the top within the purple or the yellow color. about the shapes and I would say try to do it in one go I wouldn't try to fuss with these too much the more you fuss with them the thicker and bigger they get the less they look realistic so just kind of try to get it in one one brush stroke if you can using the three eighths inch angle for these. And all you need is the suggestion of these of these shapes. Your eye kind of fills in the rest of the details for you. It's amazing how our minds do that. They see the shape and context and they fill in the rest for us. So um, I didn't mention these brush strokes here, but this is basically just the edge of my um, round or my angle brush here pulling in to create these more bladed Similar to the rounded edge, except for I'm using the flat edge of this and 
pointing it out so that I'm getting these nice sharp edges on my um, dahlia petals there and a lot of this is going to be covered up so I'm not going to worry too much about getting it just so maybe get a little bit of yellow um, I actually want the kind of Indian yellow hue there we go because it's kind of a really creamy pink and lots of white. Oh, that's nice variegation on there. That's good. I like that. Okay. These are these ones here that I've got going on right now. These ones. So that's what we're painting kind of the outside edge of it just like that so I can see there's kind of some orangey color this one's facing a little bit farther away from us though it's a little bit more like that um, so maybe get maybe do some of these that are kind of right here coming out I like those so I'm gonna get I cleaned out my brush because I was having a trouble getting my cl my color white enough so I'm going to do some of these kind of curling ones here that are kind of curling out the back of it, like there too. There we go. They're the most beautiful flowers. I never really got why people love dahlias so much until I grew them myself. <laughs> like, no, I get it. I totally get it. They're gorgeous. Absolutely gorgeous. They're not great cut flowers, though. They don't last very long, maybe a couple of days, and then they're, they start to fade. But, And I know there's probably things I could be doing. I've tried the tricks, but I'm too lazy to bother. <laughs> I know there's... Heat the ends and do weird things to them, but yeah. But even I mean, you know, I noticed the ones on the back porch; they were really vibrant and fully bloomed yesterday, mm -hmm. and then today they were starting to look a little yeah tired. Yeah, they're not a long-lived right flower. Getting the lime green here. Somebody also mentioned this um, in one of my groups. She was painting on wood, and she was seeing... Let's see if I can get it close enough so you can see what I'm talking about. No, but you see where the canvas texture is showing through? She was frustrated because her wood texture was showing through, and that is... That's totally normal. What That, that happens when you're dry brushing or your paint is a little bit thick and you're going over a textured surface like canvas or wood or whatever. So to fix that, you just add a little water to make your paint a little bit more fluid and then you can it'll fill right in Let's see now there's no holes no gaps so just add a little bit of water super quick fix easy easy peasy it'll fix it and then you'll you won't have the Holes. I don't mind the holes. I kind of think they're part of the character of the painting. It makes it look more like a painting to me. I have those, but some people really don't like them. So it's just up to you. Whatever you want to do. Um, I'm going to use some of this and kind of go around these edges here a little bit more too and define these a little bit better. Just a few of them. This one I might add maybe a little bit of, get a little bit of white with my lime color. Add a couple a couple little buds coming out. And then dab in 
the centers of my flowers. Um, I still haven't done the ones off this side, but I'm going to get a little bit of my pink and just maybe a little bit more. more over here too. Let's go ahead and do it right now actually. So this one's going to come off carving like that. color too. I'm going to get a little bit of ultramarine blue here and do this one a little bit more blue coming out here. Maybe do another one. Yeah, there's another one. There is another one right here with the blue. Just make sure everything's kind of Connected somehow, give it a stem or something if it's sticking out. It's all right, it just needs to be connected. Good. Okay. Good. I'm enjoying the show. Good. Okay, I'm going to do this down in here. All right. I like that. Got a little bit more color than the ones. Um, and I might I might go back in with a little bit more of the magenta in there because they they are a little bit brighter more violet than I made them, but I think for now we're looking good on the right track. I'm going to get some white and add that to this purpley pink color here and just go in and add my centers to these while I'm thinking about it. Just dabbing in little little bits. Nothing, nothing fancy. Okay, let's go ahead and do my, um, there is a mazurka, um, one of the, those reddish, reddish zinnias back here that I missed and when I drew it, I can see it now. So I might, Let me think. I think I'm gonna. I think I'm gonna make do a big one right here. But uh, I might could. I don't know. I'm just 
just not sure if I want to do it or not. Up here, I kind of put this guy up high. I'm not really sure why I put him so high. I, I really, I think I need to bring him down. I'm going to get some of that green from the background. And bring, bring that whole part down. I'm not really sure why I put him way up high like, like that. And then to blend that out, I'm just gonna use what's left on my brush here. Wipe out most of it and just kind of push it, push it out away from, away from that color. Get a paper towel and kind of wipe off any parts that get on places I don't want them. Magenta, a little bit of the white. I've got a little bit of the red, but I think I want to keep it pretty close to magenta. Mm, okay, so I've got the big yellow daisy right, or the big yellow echinacea right there. So I guess this is where I was going to put the zinnia. Although there's like a and I'm going to put it right here because it's kind of in, in between. Okay. Put it right there. I'm just going to kind of do that to place hold. And then I'm going to do my yellow... kind of yellow so I'm just going to kind of let it I do need some green around it though kind of have too much just open space right here I'm going to fill that in with green and then come back to it because just left too much open space right there. Okay. Yeah, I have another picture of the the zinnia in a little bit better position and there's like a dark leaf right here so I'm gonna kind of put a leaf in here that'll cover up the back of that that dahlia so I don't have to bother with it So let's put in, I'm going to go ahead and stick with this brush, take this one out of the water. This is my angle brush. I'm going to get my cadmium red light and my cadmium orange, add my white to it, get some Indian yellow hue, make it a little bit more yellowy color. I think I'm going to put one of the mazurka over here. So I'm going to put this kind of right in here. I kind 
I hate that I have to cover that petal up, but it's fine. garden poppy. I'm going to get some of that lighter color for the center. We'll put some highlights on it. Get a little bit more of that yellow, brighter yellow with the cadmium yellow light and the Indian yellow hue. And I need more white. going to really have to define the snapdragon a whole lot. They're not really very well defined in our picture. <laughs> they have kind of a odd shape. It's so kind of hard to tell what they are. If you want to do a different flower here, you can. Because mine were kind of a yellowish color with a little bit of pink, orangey pink in the inside. So I can get a little bit of the orange and kind of try to dab that into the middle, but there wasn't a whole lot of variation in the, as far as the color, and that makes it a little bit tricky to paint, you know, when there's not a lot of obvious contrast. So I'm going to kind of try to do my best. It's, it's about as good as it's going to get, I think. I'll put my Xenia over the top. Kind of doing white here. They have these petals that kind of do a line that are folding away from each other. That kind of fan out. So there's kind of a, a bright light, a bright edge, and then sort of the darker. All right. Well, I again, it's they're very very indistinct in my photograph. That they're almost just a big old blob. So <laughs> and there are a few buds, so I can kind of do a few like little buds that were kind of pinkish. I can get a little bit of pink here. Mix that in with my yellow. I might just add a little bit of the pink in there to help separate the parts of the flower a little bit. That's a little bit better there. These were fancy, can't wear imperial something. I can't remember. They were they weren't like the regular snapdragons and they I thought they were petunias from like <laughs> they, they snuck in mm -hmm. uh, I'm glad they did they were beautiful but I thought they were petunias the place I put them <laughs> they had <clears throat> moved over in the in the uh, seed tray <laughs> So some of their seeds got over into the into my other area, and so when they grew up, I thought they were going to be, you know, when you put them in the ground, you you know, they're only that big, so you're not really seeing the leaves develop that much enough to know what they're going to be. At least I couldn't tell. Obviously, I couldn't because I put them where I was not, where I was putting my. 
Genius. And we got some beautiful Snapdragons instead. These were the only ones that actually survived. Every year I have these successes and then I try to do it again and then they, the next year it never works, you know? It's like I have these like beginner fluke luck. It's probably going to be the same for my Hollyhock, which did amazing on their first year this year. And the next year they'll probably all die on me. That's pretty much how I do gardening. I'm not... <laughs> How many pumpkins did we get this year? What? How many pumpkins did we get this year? Zero. Zero. Last year we had more pumpkins than we knew what to do with. Mm -hmm. They literally overrun our garage, and this year we have zero. <laughs> so this is how we do. <laughs> this is our... I'm, I'm realizing that yeah. this is... Last year I had more tomatoes than I knew what to do with. This year we got zero. And I have like 12 plants, and they well, they're are doing all good now. They're, they're, they're starting comeback. to come back, but man, we had a brutal summer. Yeah, we did. And this all is right. why we're not farmers. No, we dabble just enough to frustrate ourselves. <laughs> we have $200 tomatoes. We do have $200 tomatoes. <laughs> He's not lying. So the, this year's <laughs> successful crop has been jalapenos. Oh my goodness! We've done what at least four gallons oh, worth of easily four gallons so far, and they're still going strong. Easily four gallons off of three plants. Yeah. Oh my gosh, they are yummy and yes, prolific. Very, very much loving our soil right now and climate. I'm putting in some leaves here before I put in the rest of my flowers, just to have some. They, I didn't have a lot of leaves in this photo, but I'm putting some in anyways. Like to have them. All right, let's do one up here. This is green and a little bit of purple added. Purple is a great color for green for some reason. Doesn't make sense, I don't know why, but it works. It makes a really rich dark green color. Very pretty. Okay. And then add some white. Just add some little centers and little bit of yellow. Yellow is a good color to add for your greens. When you add white, they kind of get chalky. And if you add the yellow, it brightens that green up again. So, there you go. Alright. We're getting there. Taking it slow. I need to get moving though. Got getting close to the cutoff time marks. Try not to go over two hours. On yeah, you better not, because you know how I get. <laughs> Alright, I'm gonna try this one. This is a short overall. Short oval filbert. Try to say that fast. And the Aspen, Princeton, Princeton, Aspen. My goodness, I can't talk all of a sudden. These, I got my implants in and my teeth and my tongue is not used to them. I thought I'm, th I'm flurring a little bit. Um, my tongue, as I'm trying to talk, it's hitting, it's hitting the, my teeth. My dentist said that they would, my tongue would move. But it hasn't done so far, and it's been like three weeks, so I'm ready for it to move because <laughs> I'm tired of slurring. Uh, I swear I haven't been drinking. Not yet, at least. <laughs> All right. 
getting my white, adding it to my my orange from this color. And the reason I picked this is a little bit short. It's got a little bit more width to it, but it's not as wide as this one. So it's about half the size. And it, um, I, I was, I used this, but I can't get that rounded shape with this brush um, for what I want. So this one will help. It's also really stiff. So what's gonna happen is I'm gonna dry brush. I've got it loaded fairly thick, but I'm gonna use a really light touch because I just want it to skim on the top. So I'm gonna set it down, kind of smush it down, and I'm gonna really quickly just flick it towards the center. Set it down, kind of smush it out, and flick. And kind of flicked it longer than I meant to right there, so. Showing you how to do it, but very, like almost just the little twitch of the wrist. I'm gonna pull it towards the center there. And then I'm gonna pick where my next set of petals are gonna be. So I'm gonna leave this like a gap right here and just pick out where I want some of these other center petals to be and maybe pull this a little bit farther down towards the middle. I can change the color too if I want to, but I, I, I think I'm pretty good. Um, there we go. So there we go. Nice little flowers. I'm gonna get my darker color and kind of come in here. This is the cadmium red light and I'm gonna kind of go in the opposite direction from the center out. Do a little bit of that. Maybe in between some of these if I need a little bit of separation. And I could do this color. I probably should have done this darker color first, but I tend to like to do this a couple of times, a couple of layers in a couple of, you know, sections. So do do the like base color, then do kind of a layer of the light color in here and then kind of go around, soften up that light color, make sure I've got enough of the darker, dark, really dark, dark, dark. I'm gonna get even some reddish tone and come around the center here and just blend that out so that it's kind of nice and dark. And then wipe my brush out, go back to my light color here and maybe get even more light. And again, kind of like the green, if you want it to be a little bit brighter, you can add a little bit of yellow to it. That'll make your bright highlights even brighter, um, a little bit less dull colored. And uh, what, what kind of flower is that orange one? This one is a garden poppy. Garden poppy. Yes. Hmm. Different from a yard poppy? I guess so. Hmm. But I was really excited. To, we had a lot of poppies that hmm. grew up this year. They weren't too bad. They they didn't really go where we wanted them to go. They kind of moved as soon as I planted them. The, we got rain, and it washed them all kind of in weird places. But those that bloomed, they were really pretty. They did pretty well. They were just crowded. I should have I should have weeded them out. I this is my problem. I know that I'm supposed to do it, and that the plant would be healthier if I do them. If I like have four plants, and I remove all but one, that the one plant that survives is going to get bigger and healthier. But I can't do it. I can't. I can't. I can't kill the babies. I can't do it. This is probably part of my gardening problem. So. There's got to, there's, there's probably a help for, <laughs> you'd think I learned after the carrots. <laughs> Deformed and yeah. really short. <laughs> yeah, we're not carrot farmers for sure. <laughs> My carrots were like this big. The tops were super long and healthy yeah, looking. Some good pictures. We're like, these are going to be the best big yeah. carrots ever. And we picked them. And they were like, yeah, <laughs> this nope. all deformed. Mm, tiny. Oh, well. It's all right. It's all right. Gardening's fun. It is. I love it anyways. It's a nice distraction. It is. All right. 
Uh, yeah, we started Dark Garden during COVID, so we were home too much. We're like, we need a hobby. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Here we go. Well, we, uh, we were starting it before COVID hit. It just we happened to you know, work out for happened us. To, yeah, happened to be good. So I've added just a, like a tiny, tiny touch of green, a little bit more of a neutral yellow here. So like a like yellow, this one that I was using for the... I don't know what those are. They don't look. They don't look like. I can't call those. Um, what are they? Stamp dragons. I can't call them that yet. They don't look like anything. But we'll we'll try to fix them. It's okay. So I'm gonna dab in here with the tip and just dab little dabby dabs around there. Really pretty. Really pretty. A little bit of green going down along the bottom of the yellow part and just kind of darkening that up just a little bit. There we go. Um, on there, I'm going to get some yellow and green, a little bit of white, and kind of go in here and kind of put a little highlights on those little dark green bits and I really didn't get them dark enough so I'm going to get a little bit more of my dark green and go back in and kind of darken up just a couple of spots on there okay that looks good and make sure that my flower petal is not going over the top of that because it should be behind it and not in front of it right there just noticed my flower was going over the top of my stem but it's supposed to be behind it that would not be good. Okay, there we go. Um, yeah, I really kind of just want to take these snapdragons out of them there. Don't like them, but I'm going to get some white and maybe I can salvage them by just kind of highlighting the tops of them. Defining the petals a little bit better. I think part of the problem is just my pictures aren't great of them. They were all kind of washed out color and they just look like a solid blob of yellow. There's not a lot of detail in them. All right, those are better at least. They're starting to look better. I might leave them in if I can get them looking decent. Otherwise, don't feel, don't feel like you have to leave your flowers in if you don't like them. Just put a leaf there. Take them out. Whatever. You're not obligated to paint it the way you see it. Always cracks me up when people like leave me comments like, they don't look like the same color as you, you know, or whatever, you know, whatever the reference photo was, and I chose to make a change to it. It's like, yeah, that's, you know, the reference photo is like a starting point. It's not like I have to use it and it has to be exactly the same as it. You, you've got your own instincts that you can follow. Now, I would say I wouldn't go too far off a reference photo unless you know what you're doing because that can be disastrous. But <laughs> um, if you're going for realistic painting, at least. You can really kind of mess yourself up if you're if you don't have good references and you're trying to paint from memory something that's pretty difficult and realistic, you know. But got some good references. You can change it up a little bit, change colors, whatever. All right, I'm gonna get my magenta again and go here and get my mazurka zinnia here going. Really pretty zinnias. They're really kind of they're they're small for compared to some of my other zinnias. My queen lime are usually bigger than they have turned out this year too. They are kind of small on the small side. I guess they're not as big as some of the other varieties though. Just in general, they're a little bit smaller. Some of my zinnias are huge. Purple, 
purple something, I can't remember. Or ginormous. All right. Um, so doing the petals around, doing the smaller petals. Going to get some, I'm going to get this really dark. Well, I've got a picture of one of them that's got a little bit more mature center. And I'm going to get that purple and use that for the center of this one. So, be good. And then get my white. And I'm just going to get the tiniest bit of the magenta. And just like I did with my poppy, I'm going to use the tip of this brush. Um, actually, I'm going to get a little bit of the cadmium red light, too, because I'm seeing that the color is kind of a candy cane pink. It's got a little bit of, I don't even know what that means, candy cane pink. That doesn't, that's not a thing. That's not a thing. Oh, well. Um. Sure it is. I you just made it up. I just made it up. Yeah. Um, a little bit of white and bubblegum pink. That's the word I was going for. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Hmm. <laughs> Set it down, kind of just drag it towards the center there. It's just the very tips of them are all kind of bright, bright pink. And then Zinnias are about the only flower that we can reliably not kill in the summertime in Arkansas. <laughs> They're going to live. They like the heat. It's like, bring it, bring it. They don't care. They're just blooming out and happy, happy as could be. Everything else is dying and choking from the heat. They're just like, yes. This is awesome. <laughs> like, don't you know? It's too hot out for you to bloom. Nope, nope, no, it's not. We love it. We love it. Yeah, one of my friends is like, you're. They're gonna stop blooming here soon. I'm like, nope, not my zinnias. Not them. Yeah, they even knocked down the fence. They did knock down the fence. We put up a fence to hold them up. We keep because they were they grew so long they were touching the ground, and we put up a little fence to hold them back, and they just knocked it down. <laughs> Get some badass zinnias in our garden. <laughs> they. Them and the poppies, the, or the those and them and the sparrows, they're like rebels. All right, so there we go. Close enough. Uh, let's do this one over here. This one's kind of similar colors, only it's a little bit more of the muted, muted pink. Um, got a little bit, maybe a little bit of purpley tone to it. I'm going to use, and I'm going to use a little bit of that orangey tone, and that'll tone down that purple so that it's a little bit more, that, yeah, that's pretty. And now if you wanted to, you could just do this same color. It'd probably look good to do the brighter tone. Yeah, I'm taking forever, aren't I? Just realizing how late it's getting. Just talking, being ten. We're just having fun. All right, let's get going. You're just in your happy place. That's all. I am. It's been a that's all that matters. Off. You need the you need the break. <laughs> yeah, this is a rough week. <laughs> I 
thank you guys for who left me messages about my dad. He's doing better. Talked to him today on the phone. He's survived stage four cancer and now cardiac arrest. His life just keeps he keeps going. It's amazing. It's amazing. So been very, very glad. Yeah. And be around a little bit longer for us. After, uh, you know, after the event, he was in the hospital. He was sedated, unconscious, and mm-hmm. that, you know, they were trying to figure out what exactly happened. Right. And so they went in, and the cardiologist went in and examined him, you know, did some exploratory looking, and came back and says, well, it wasn't a heart attack, but he did have one in the past. He just didn't know <laughs> like, it. like, what? <laughs> Yeah. Like, like, yeah, yeah, his heart just kind of healed itself. Yeah, there's a damage there. There's blockage, and so it just found a way around it and <laughs> healed itself. It's like, it's like, really, Dad? <laughs> Doesn't surprise me. It no, just, just it's shook, just like him. Just shook that one off. Yeah, he just shut that his heart just rerouted yeah. itself around the blockage. <laughs> you know. Yeah. And reminded us of that uh, Saturday Night Live skit with the Chicago Bears. <laughs> Ditka? Yeah. Or yeah. With the guy. Yeah. With Ditka versus the bear or the... They're just sitting around the table and the yeah. one guy is always having heart attacks. Yeah. It's like, mm-hmm. wow. Yeah. Just, just beating his chest and keeping... Ah, dad. So he scared us again, but it's all good. And again, thank you for those who prayed for him and called and left messages and all that good stuff. It means a lot to us. Yes, we got a card from Peggy. Peggy. Thank you, Peggy. Very, very sweet. Getting some yellow here and my white. No, I'm not talking about my colors here. I'm sorry, but you can kind of see I'm making a mess here. It's not, there's not any rhyme or reason to what I'm doing anymore. I'm just kind of trying to get it close to what I'm seeing. So just picking colors like this kind of limeish green here. And I'm doing it around the center. I'm seeing that there's some of this yellowish white. around the mazurka one too so I'm going kind of going to do I've got purple and then I'm going to just dab it on some of that around it and this has got the darker pink in there dab in the oops pink and the, the lime green. That's the queen lime variety has these kind of highlights in the sort of lime green. They look like they're they're vintage. Like they, they look like they're aged a little bit or something. You know, they've got a really cool look. Like, they, like you've put them through a vintage filter or something. They kind of have this quality about them. So I'm just kind of going back over with this kind of, I'm, I'm not really doing a very good job of these ones. I'm doing them too fast. I need to slow down. Because they're packed a little tighter than I've painted them. A little bit more round than I've painted them. There we go. That's a little bit better. So this is just the pink plus a little bit of that lime green, lime green yellow color mixed together. Oh, I'm 
get back some of this lime, lime green yellow color and do these again over the top because I kind of painted over them. My paint's getting real thick right now so I'm going to have to stop and let it dry because it you keep painting it too much when it's thick like this it just starts to get gooey and do weird things on you so okay I'm gonna do that I'm gonna get a little bit of that pink a little bit of orange too just a little bit and white Let's do our big ol'. I'm gonna use this brush here. This is a four round with the Dakota. Just got a little bit bigger tips. Get the magenta and cadmium red light. A little bit more of the reddish tone. Trying to keep it out of the purple. I don't want that purple in there. All right, Let's see if I can get this thin enough to work with it. It's getting kind of clumpy. Checking to see if I had a picture of those. And my phone still, but I moved them all off. Of those what? Of those candy, peppermint, whatever flowers you were just talking about. Oh, the candy cane ones? Yeah. I know I have. I a, do have one. I know I have pictures of them, but I took them off my phone to make sure yeah. I had plenty of room for baby pictures. Baby pictures. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The important stuff. Absolutely. Priorities. I need to see I don't, how I don't have anything underneath there because I'm going to go between there. I need I need to have something back there. I should have, when I did my green, I should have just did this whole area with green because... It's just now I'm going to have to paint around it. Because those first few that I did, I had spots around them. So let me do that to this one too. So when you do your, when you do your background, I would just say, just don't, don't leave anything for the, the, the echinacea. Just fill it all in. I'm going to move this one over. This one's going to have the center right in here. Somewhere. And then this one's center is going to be kind of right in here, I think. We'll go over the top of that and down and around right here. And this one will kind of cover up over it there. So get that yellow. Dab it around. Conservative with it. it can go a little bit brighter and then I need to clean off my workspace because I just got a lot of area here that I've got no place to paint mix my colors anymore get all that off there I think I've already done this once maybe I'm yeah you did 
that's okay. There's no penalty for doing it more than once. No. Who is it? <laughs> Surprise, Fitzy didn't start barking. Where is Fitzy, by the way? Did he's he go out? Oh. oh. I don't see him. He's not behind me. He's the door there. Hey, speaking of that, do you know where dogs go when their tails fall off? No. They go to the retail store. No. No. That's a no. Do you have a button for that? I need a button. Actually, I do. <laughs> no. <laughs> All right. So I'm seeing now looking at it. I definitely think I want to add in some of that more violent, violet, not violent, violet, violet <laughs> color in these. Um, yeah. All right. Let's. Get some of that. A little bit of white. There we go. Okay, so I'm going to make these a little bit bigger. The whole shape is going to be right in here, so. These are going to be my small ones. And which flower is this? This is the echinacea. Yeah. It's the, uh, it was called, what was it called? Ombre red. All I know is that. When you go over the seeds, be careful because they will cut you. <laughs> I was bleeding. Yes. <laughs> yes. They dry very pointy very hard. spikes that the seeds grow in between, and yeah, they hurt. Yep. Okay. I should have done, I'm realizing I should have done this one second. So I'm not going to do these petals because I got to do the yellow ones first because they're behind this. Mm -mm. I'm going to get a little bit of this color. A little bit of glaze. I'm just going to glaze it in here. I'm going to carefully like darken up some of the middle part of this flower wipe it off and just kind of push that around a little bit. And then I'm going to get cadmium yellow light. Here's some cadmium yellow medium, which should be kind of like the cadmium yellow light with the Indian yellow hue mix, mixed in it. I'm going to grab some of that and just dab with some white. Back in there, okay. Um, all right, so let's use this. I just use, if you have the cadmium yellow medium, use that. Probably it's closer to the color than what I have here. Um, I'm going to open this flower up a little bit more. It was kind of wilting away from me, kind of opening out a little bit, or down, I should say. I need some more white. So if your yellow is not covering, add white to it. That will help. 
heavy body will kind of help too. I, I'm using thinner paints and they're not, they're not going to cover as thickly. But I'm, I'm not hating the little bit of green that I'm seeing through here. It's kind of giving them a little bit of dimension, but if you don't like that, then you can add a little bit of heavy body acrylic to them as well. It can help. All right, so there we go. I got a little bit of green in my, my green was wet there. Looks all right. This is looking very like static to me. I'm not sure I'm painting this very carefully, trying to go slow, but I think I, I think I, if I was to do this again, I'd be a little bit lo more loosey goosey with it. get a little bit of turquoise and add that to it so it's not so bright. You okay? Yep, just snuck up on me. Snuck up on you. Yeah, I'm just not loving... down here get some white and my green just put a few more of these little leaves down here So this is your this is your final practice video. For what? Before the season starts up next week. Oh, is it really? Sorry. So, oh, this I'm not doing very good. I'm not this is not a good sign. <laughs> season opener of Oak Island tomorrow. Next week? Next week, according oh to Major my. Webs. It's... You want me to play the uh, the trailer video? No, I don't. I haven't seen it yet, but I could play it real quick. No, it's okay. I'm good. I'm I, they're going to find something this year? I don't. I don't think so. I've given up hope. Uh, they tricked us last year. They They really made it seem like they found something. And then yet again, they didn't find anything. <laughs> Last year was the most underwhelming year of all of them because they really didn't find anything. Like, they've dug a bunch of holes and they didn't find anything. So well, I'm, I'm sure they're going to blow done. a bunch of up. Yeah, probably. I'm just saying. Um, all right. Just kind of trying to figure out how I want to finish this. I, these these have to dry, so I'm just f f fiddling with the rest of it while I'm waiting for them to dry a little bit more. Um, let's add some of that that bright. brighter color to these. It's 
It's a color I don't have. That's the problem. It's I have this problem with this color all the time because they're really not a acrylic color that quite does it. Just there's not a color that is this. This. <laughs> it's a very unique. So I'm using thalo or ultramarine blue and and magenta. That's the probably closer to the, than the doxazine purple coloring. And I'm gonna get a little bit more white. See, the problem is when you add white, it starts to go kind of chalky. So you just have to kind of. I need white for the lighter value and then add more of the magenta to brighten up the color. Okay, that's okay. some highlights. I put out white like five times now. Mm -hmm. Just keep going through the white. Well, it's easier to, white. to get out of the bottle and put it back in, so. True. Can go sparely. True. So while you're doing that, just remind everybody about the Patreon. Mm -hmm. There, you can now sign up any day and get a full month from that day, yeah. which is awesome. Yep. Thank you, Patreon, for changing that up. Makes it easier. And mm -hmm. uh, we have the, the patreon.com slash angelfineart there. You can go over and check out all the different levels, ranging from just traceables to... Bonus videos and challenge videos, different mm -hmm. levels of of more difficult and more advanced painting. If you're like that kind of thing, yeah, we appreciate all the supporters over there. Continue month after month. We really appreciate it. Yes, we do. Amazing. We've got some awesome patrons. Some of them have been with us from mm -hmm. the very first. From the first month. Yeah, it's amazing. Amazing. Well, we have the ten dollar level. We're finishing up a project this week that we've been working on for a couple. Uh, I guess this will be the fourth lesson. So we do uh, in the ten dollar level. We ten dollar level. We do um, like one major project that we work on until I finish. So it's usually an hour and a half to two hours on Thursdays. Sometimes we skip a week if I've got, you know, something going on, but um, we try to do at least three Thursdays a month um, in that on that level. And this is what we're working on right now. So macarons and books. And we've got some details to do in here, just some finishing up, some a little bit more with the shadowing and things. And, um, tea bag and different things like that but um that one's 90 90 percent done it's I'm gonna finish it up this thursday so looking forward to that that one's been a fun fun project to do 
Um, and to remind everybody that when you join, you get access to all the prior videos and sessions. Right. You don't just pick up from there. So, like, they could sign up today and they could go back and watch the previous right. ones for that one and all the others. Yep. All right. Adding the yellow-green to the magenta and the white to make the color for this one. And I covered up part of that petal there. I didn't really like the way that looks. And let's add more of the yellow. And there is some dark color down in here. In this, I'm going to get some dark magenta and green and just kind of go in here because even though it's like a light color there is some area down in between these petals that I'm seeing that is making it look flat because there's no depth so I've got to put in some dark color even though it looks funky right now I've got to put in some dark color here I, I, I didn't put it dark enough when I did my light colors so that's on me Sometimes when you're painting these light colors, it's easy to just see the top layers. And if you do that, then you end up with kind of a flat painting or, you know, flat flower like I had there. So got to gotta do the dark areas first, and then you can go in and add your lighter highlights, and then it will make more sense. And so we'll just add the petals around that and... Get the yellow with the white and a little bit of the green. You can do those. Just a little bit of the green in here with the, my magenta. And I'm going to just do my petals this way. So sorry if you're following along with me and I'm doing this. I hope you watch the end. <laughs> I, would, I would suggest watching the end before you paint along with me because I do this sometimes I find I see things that I missed and I realize now that I started these petals a little too light they needed to be a little bit darker they have to have this depth in the middle of them if they don't have this depth they just don't look right so they have to have this dark area back in here and I have to blend it out into these back petals because I tried to kind of fix it there sort of cheating and it didn't work it just wasn't, it wasn't blended enough, so it looked funky. So I have to blend it out into these back petals so that it, it all is part of the same color. We'll just let that dry. Sorry, honey. Yeah, you are uh, delaying the consumption of one pumpkin cheesecake oh that is right okay i need to hurry yeah life <laughs> goals here pumpkin cheesecake check all right get in my white here adding it to my yellows this is mostly dry not quite but almost there let me see if i can get it to stick on top um i'm gonna get my thicker 
thicker paint, it'll do a better job. Still, or they, they all gone to sleep? Uh, no. Need to finish the painting. No, we still have a, a few people here. <laughs> a few people. Yeah. Okay, good. I'm entertaining them. Nice. Talking about coffee. Oh, good. All right. And we really need to get sponsorship from Onyx. <laughs> We could get enough people saying that they'd buy it if they if we did. Then oh, maybe. Oh yeah, like you did with the tea. <laughs> <laughs> Getting some white, that yellow, air, and dabbing on. That was still amazing for sure. So I dabbed on some burnt sienna and burnt umber there while I was talking to Mark. I'm not, I'm not doing a good job of telling people what I'm doing here tonight. <sighs> that that works. Um, I think that. I'm going to just kind of pull out a little bit of darker color from the center here. A few of them. And then on this one, I'm going to add a little bit of the orangey tone. I got a little bit of burnt sienna in there too. And I don't have to do a whole lot with these petals. These ones already have kind of two layers, so I'm going to go ahead and do the center part of the echinacea here. And then back here, it's kind of just burnt umber. Normally, the echinacea are purple cone flowers, or purple, obviously, as the name implies. So. These ones are more special. Get a little bit of this yellowy color and add it to the flowers there. All right, let's try this one more time. I think that's dry enough. We're going to try it. I'm going to add the yellow-green to it. And more white. And I'm still out of white. And I need to leave some of this dark toward the center here. So I need to make sure that I'm leaving a little bit of it. Go a little bit darker on some of these. some of these with a little bit of the lighter color on the tip. And then yeah, one more layer kind of close 
closer to the middle. You see how that darker in there helps so much. Now, now it's got some depth. Before it was looking really flat. If you go back, rewind, and see, you can see what I'm talking about. But get some of that magenta and just dab in, leaving that dark purpley color, that dark color in there. And then get more of my white and yellow green mixture and doing a few over the top right there just around the center and, and then on this guy I'm going to get some orange my yellow use that on here just little, little bits of yellow orangey right on the tip of some of these these ones kind of already have it around there. There we go. And let's go ahead and do just a little bit more. bit of yellow. The yellow always brightens up your your um, kind of warm colored mixtures. So adding a little bit of this yellow yellow to this red and it keeps it from turning pink. It makes it brighter. going to glaze to get that brighter magenta color back on because it's kind of light so I'm just going to take some glaze a um, little bit of magenta and white and go over it might even get a little bit of this reddish tint from here set on there and I'm going to push it around a little bit. Brighten that up. And then go back in. Just do some of the tips of the petals. Just a little bit of the light color. did it. 
Yes, I did. Took a minute. You did it? Yes. What did you do? It was all me. Oh. <laughs> you said, well, it looks like we did it. So I was taking some credit. <laughs> I kept, kept the chat going. I kept you on camera. Thank you. I think the whole show, actually. That, that, Cause I didn't really that's zoom awesome. In. Yeah. Because you didn't zoom in. <laughs> <laughs> well, we were zoomed. It was pretty easy you, to do. You did zoom in when uh, when you did the little side tutorial to get it in focus. And then you zoomed back out. Yeah. So okay. there you go. Thank you. <sighs> it was a tough one. <laughs> I think if I was to do it again, I would take the Snapdragons out. I don't really like them don't think they add anything and they're not I don't know that I don't like them so just just that just I don't like them I'm gonna add a little bit more yellow too and those for um, you that are new to the channel when she says she's done ha <laughs> ha <laughs> 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 that <laughs> word has a whole other You're meaning so funny. in this universe <laughs> Yes. It could be and another 20 minutes. I'm still, no, it's not. It's not going to be. I'm just fiddling right now, looking. What I'm doing is taking a step back. That's what I always do at the end of the painting. Usually, oh, how did I get that yellow down there? Did I just do that? Nope, I didn't. It's been there. All right, well, let's just put... Let's put something yellow down there. I don't know why, what, what we did there, but... I'm just going to put some yellows, yellow flowers going down there. Um, maybe, maybe I can get it off there. I'm not sure. I don't like, think I like that. Let me see if I can get it off. No. Okay. All right. So let's just do a couple leaves instead of yellow. Um... Well, you, you ought to, like, very rarely will you sit down and finish a painting in two hours and then be like, yep, that's perfect. You know, most of the time you're going to see things later, and that's what I'm trying to replicate is that that time and distance here. Just going to take a step back, start looking at it objectively, see if there's anything I missed, um, any, any changes I want to make. I might just make a bigger leaf. Make make this a big leaf here. I think that's gonna be a better option. Okay. of my darker colors just to make a dark green. There we go. Okay. Well, that actually doesn't look bad there. It's a happy accident. Just make sure that you've got, you know, all your all your bits filled in correctly, you know. Everything makes sense. All your flowers have stems if they need them. That looks good. I'm going to leave it and then sign it. This went a little bit more realistic than I intended, but I got a little carried away. It's all right. Are we ready? I am ready. Go for it. Okay. Let's do... Super Chat. We have one Super Chat tonight. Awesome. It was a while ago. But we, it's from Cindy. Oh, thank you, and Cindy. And she says, it's been a good week. Mm. Congrats. Oh, 
Thank you very much, Cindy. Thank you, Cindy. Really appreciate that. Yes. And then we have a question. Okay. Let me put some highlights on this while you're asking. And the question is from Nancy. Okay. And says that she's in hospice and using oh. painting as therapy. Oh, that's wonderful. So what is the best or fastest way to learn better techniques? Hmm. Um, I would say pick pick something that you want to improve and work on that. And then pick something else and work on that. So um, I'm practicing on paper is also really beneficial. So if you have, like, you know, the practice sheet like I showed um, earlier, um, using something like that to work on your brush strokes and things. I've got a brush stroke video, but, you know, take out your pad of paper and do exactly this. Practice it here before you go on your canvas. That'll help you, um, you know, so if you want to work on, you know, get better at flowers, I would just do all flowers for a while and just, you know, really focus on those. Um, uh, I have a beginner series that probably would be good to just watch through, even if you don't do all the projects, but it goes over a lot of the basics that I don't always cover in other videos. Um, right now I'm doing a poll to kind of see what kind of things you guys want to um, see in a new beginner series. So if you want to get in on that, I have it on my Facebook group um, down in the description. There's a link. But, um, but yeah, I'll be... What was her name again? Nancy. Nancy. Oh, that's right. Yeah, my aunt named Nancy. So um, definitely be praying for you, Nancy. Thank you for painting along, and hopefully um, you will find some comfort in painting. I know it's great therapy for a lot of people. Yes, it is. And uh, I'm glad that you're... You're not alone in that, for sure. No, not at all. Not at all. Super glad to have you. Yeah, we've, we've had so many... Watching. Amazing testimonies over the years of people, you know, going through all kinds of different things in their lives, mm. and and uh, painting is definitely good therapy. Yes, it is. With a good cup of hot chocolate. <laughs> yes. All right, just doing a couple little last-minute little touch-ups since I painted over all my yellow highlights on that one. Doing that. And, uh, all right, there we go. We're going to quit there today. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Thank you for watching along. As always, like, subscribe, thumbs up, all that good stuff. And we'll be back next week. Um, hopefully, fingers mm -hmm. crossed. <laughs> yeah, we thank everybody for understanding all that's going on. And the schedule is fluid right now. So, yeah. And we're, Angela's planned for the normal schedule, but right We've at the drop of a hat, up. something could change. So got another baby, grandbaby coming, and my you know dad's still in the hospital. So just trying to keep keep uh, positive and hope for the best. Made went ahead and made our October schedule, and some, you know, but yeah, things can change. So we'll be sure to let everybody know if you know if we have to postpone anything but um she hopefully the brush again. i know sorry <laughs> i'm stopping i promise i do i do think i want to spl splatter this though i pulled out <gasps> a last minute splatter whoop whoop <laughs> where's david is he in the house no i haven't seen david chat okay. tonight <laughs> This is for David, even though he's not watching. Hopefully he's watching the replay. That's right. <laughs> All right. David's the name of my dad, too, so although he doesn't watch our videos. <laughs> Actually, they do sometimes. But yeah, they, they, they do occasionally. <laughs> I joke. I, I tease. I watch them sometimes, too. You watch them sometimes, but you wouldn't be watching unless you had to. That's the point. <laughs> no comprendo. This is not, <laughs> this is not Mark's <laughs> cup of tea. <laughs> He's uh, much more now 
if I was going over tech stuff, he'd be all about it. Oh, yeah. If I was doing Excel spreadsheets, maybe. Oh. Then he'd really be all about it. Can you paint an Excel spreadsheet? <laughs> huh? <laughs> we'll think about it. Okay, good. <laughs> doing some light splatters here. Oh, my goodness. Okay, well, if that happens, I've got a couple spots here that I need to take off. These are wet, so they'll come right off if you get the right kind of paper towel out here. I'm trying not to take off all my splatters at the same time. There we go. Comes right off. Don't panic. Just make sure your background's dry. If you do this with wet paint, it's going to take off all of it, but just as long as your background's dry, you can splatter, and if you make a mistake or get it somewhere you don't like it, you just wipe it off. It's no biggie. No big deal. All right, there we go. I think that's good. I like the splattering. It just adds a little extra something to it. I, I, you can leave it out if you hate it, but I love it. So that's it. All right, thank you guys so much. I really mean it this time. We're, we're leaving. <laughs> Have a great rest of your week. We'll see you next time. Bye.